I hear they plan to run a railroad clean across the state. Of course, I don't know that the darn thing will ever amount to much. Ah, railroads. Maybe with a system of railroads we can free ourselves, not be so dependent on our neighbors. Yes, we can progress. John Moorhead says that trains will ride the track even in wet weather. Even when the roads are bad, looks like they'd slip off, don't it? Well, I say it's going to work wonders. Then you know who's doing it? Well, he's called Moorhead. So that means he's got something to do with Scotland. And that means it's going to get done. Yes, a century ago, the whole state of North Carolina was talking about railroads and about the man who thought North Carolina ought to go forward with this new steam invention. That man was Governor John Motley Moorhead. This model locomotive may be called a symbol of John Motley Moorhead, but it is not a symbol of all that he did. Governor Moorhead was for 38 years a trustee of the University of North Carolina. He organized the Alumni Association and was its first president. He was a reformer of the state constitution chairman of the National Whig Convention, friend of religious dissenters, champion of equal representation of the people, spokesman for gradual emancipation of the slaves and of the right of free Negroes to vote. He was a planter, builder of railroads, mills, factories, promoter of highways, founder of Moorhead City. He was a prophetic idealist, a practical agricultural industrial, and political statesman. In its article about the first locomotive ever to arrive in the capital city, the Raleigh Register, which I have before me, had this to say. Magnificent enterprise. We have now actual demonstration of that which no man would have believed 30 years ago to be within the compass of human power. Truly has it been said that the last few years have unfolded more that is novel, vast, and wonderful than the whole 18 centuries of the Christian era. That's the end of the quotation. This, I say, is a symbol of a great statesman that the people were talking about a century ago. His ancestor, by the way, was Agnes Moorhead, the mother of James Watt, the inventor of the steam engine. symbol of another John Motley Moorhead, grandson of the governor, a man of our century, about whom the whole state of North Carolina is talking with reverence because he has made to us reverent gifts. The Moorhead Building, the Planetarium, Art Gallery and Scientific Exhibits are in real and proper terms types of prayers made of brick and steel and lenses and lights, to be sure. But they are not tied to the things of this earth. The Moorhead Patterson Bell Tower also lifts our spirits to the music of the spheres. The Moorhead Scholarships, perhaps 400 full-time scholarships to the university in a given school year, are dedicated to the youth and future leaders of our state. This is the John Motley Moorhead of our century who lives in another day of magnificent enterprise, who lives in a time of great expansion in communications, just as did Governor Moorhead. And of these present-day expanses, the most challenging and potentially the most rewarding is television, the greatest aid to education since the invention of the printing press. There you are, sir. And just in time, too. In time for what? For Dr. Boyd, he should be starting his daily Bible class on the UNC television station. Didn't know they had a Bible in Chapel Hill. Well, they do. And this guy Boyd can really explain it. So a fellow like me can understand it. Come on, sit down and watch. 
Don't worry, I won't charge you for the extra time. This is a pleasure. I tell you, Helen, if someone had told me when I was in high school that I'd be looking forward each afternoon to listen to some professor from Women's College lecture on Charles Dickens, I would have thought him crazy. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Thanks to television, a lot of us are finding out that learning can be fun. Take George, for example. Used to, when I turned the television set to an educational station to watch a demonstration on home economics or a lecture on history or art or even a concert by the Women's College Glee Club, George would get up and leave the room. You know, go out back and work in the yard or try to find something to do around the house or someone to visit with for a while. But the other evening, we finished dinner later than usual. And while I was washing dishes, George got up and turned on the TV set. This time, he picked the station. And you know what program he chose? A program on the process of osmosis in the northwest New Hampshire birch tree. <laughs> I thought I was a pretty good tobacco topper till I saw this TV show from State College last week. You see it? No, but my neighbors told me about it. Well, this stuff is money in the farmer's pockets. You can't afford to miss it. Don't intend to miss it anymore. I cut out the whole TV schedule. Gonna do it every week. Soil and water conservation, building and dairy herd, farm machine repairs, chicken feed ain't hay, getting the most out of a 20-acre farm, improving pasture and forage crop, and a new weevil threatens. And I'll be in front of my TV when school takes in. I sure do wish you were well enough to get up and around a little more, Uncle Jim. I saw the Star of Bethlehem show at the Planetarium in Chapel Hill last night, my wife and I, and it was out of this world. I'm afraid I'm not going to get to Chapel Hill anytime soon. But you know that eclipse they had on the other night? Well, I wouldn't have known what that was all about if it hadn't been for, for that television program from the Planetarium. Well, I propped up here in bed, looked out the window and see the moon. They put a television set down here. And I looked out there and saw the eclipse of the moon and then looked at the television set and saw the explanation and the diagrams. And it was just like having an astronomer right here in the room with me explaining it to me. My wife and I saw that show too. That probably helped a lot of people. It was great. But what was really great was that program they had on on heart disease last night. If I'd seen that five years ago, or even one year ago, I wouldn't be in this bed right now. Say, did you see this book about those Moorhead scholarships? No, I haven't seen any book. But the other night I saw a TV show about those scholarships, and they're really worth shooting for. John Motley Moorhead. Well, that's the old jigger who gave North Carolina all this television we're getting. President Gordon Gray has written this about the Moorhead family. No North Carolina family ever dreamed greater dreams for North Carolina than the six generations of Moorheads that have lived in the state over a century and a half. And few families have done so much to make their dreams come true. His gift with his cousin Rufus Lenore Patterson of the Bell Tower adds to the beauty and music of Chapel Hill. The Moorhead Planetarium has brought the stars down to the people of North Carolina. The Moorhead Scholarships, searching out our most promising youth and sending them to the university where they may develop into the future leaders of our state and nation will help lift our people to the stars. And now, this other gift, educational television, which will reach into the homes of North Carolinians with knowledge, ideas, and reports vital to accelerated progress. Now, this gift of educational television, which will take the consolidated university to the people, which will accomplish in unifying and freeing the minds of our people and stimulating our actions, what the coming of the railroads achieved in freeing and stimulating our commerce and total progress. And so, a newspaper editor today might say, of the work of our present day, John Motley Moorhead, exactly what a newspaper of a hundred years ago said of the John Motley Moorhead of that day. Magnificent enterprise, 
we have now actual demonstration of that which no man would have believed 30 years ago to be within the compass of human power. Truly has it been said that the last few years have unfolded more that is novel, vast, and wonderful than the whole 19 centuries of the Christian era. And what may be said in the future is for the next generation to know and to say. Just how can it help saying, looking back, that here is a family which has always looked forward, that here is a name which for six generations has stood in this state for vision and has seen the needs of the people and generously stepped forward to lead in meeting those needs and which will serve also down through the years that brightest star of all.